history video and I have Dorothy O'Dell here who is going to talk about her experiences growing up on her family farm. So why don't you just tell us how it started with your family, your grandfather I think. Oh, my, my grandfather um, inherited this farm from several generations back. It's called a century farm because it's over a hundred years in the same family. Uh, my grandfather did not farm, however. He was working in the oil fields at the time. And he also um, went to Colorado and was a chuck wagon cook on the railroads when they built the railroads through Colorado. Uh, I later moved to Colorado, so that's kind of ironic. Uh, but when my father's brother was 14, he asked his father if he could farm. And his father said, yes, absolutely could. And he could keep all the money that he made off of it. At the time, my father was 10 years old. But he decided that sounded like a good idea. So he started farming also at the age of 10. The, on his 15th birthday, he went to town and bought a brand new car. I think it was a Model T car. He was the only oh, one cool. in the family that had a car. Wow, awesome. So after that, he would take his produce into town and, uh, and uh, sell it door to door. And uh, he, he was making more money than anybody else in the family. And he also uh, supported his car by driving a carpool to school. At that time, you went to a... But my dad graduated from high school uh, as a carpenter. And so he had bought a farm of his own close by the big farm. The big farm was originally a square mile, which is 650 acres. So it's, wow. a, it's a lot of land. And a lot of it was in woods. It's very hilly. But my dad bought a smaller farm, like 33 acres. Uh, adjacent to the big farm, but down in the valley. And uh, he began to farm on his own, but he was also working as a carpenter. Uh, back in those days, um, when a man got married, he took his bride home with him. And so my parents lived in the homestead um, until I was born. My sister was a year and six days old when I was born. And uh, when I was like just about two weeks old, they moved down to, the, uh, to his own farm. Uh, he did this for several years, but he realized that he couldn't keep farming, literally by moonlight, and working. And so he wanted to uh, move to town, but he didn't like any of the towns in the area. This was near Pittsburgh. There were a lot of steel mills. Uh, it was very dirty. and. He, he was such a farm boy that he just didn't think he could live in town. But he went on a trip to uh, Colorado Springs with his brother-in-law. And when he saw Colorado Springs, he just fell in love with it. And he said, if he had to live in a town, it was going to be Colorado Springs. So he put the farm up for sale. And it took three years. Uh, before he found a buyer, I was 11 years old, my sister was 12, and uh, we sold the farm. The day he sold it, it was all underwater because it flooded every year, and the man that bought it wanted it because he was tired of not being able to get his farm across the creek every time it flooded. So he came and he mm -hmm. bought our farm. We had a big auction sale, sold everything on the farm, including the livestock, and uh, we moved to Colorado Springs. We had, um, we did, sh um, not sharecropping, but we did um, uh, produce, and we would take the produce into town and uh, curb oh, markets. No, this is oh, still, still in Pennsylvania. Okay. Still in Pennsylvania. Okay. And um, we had cows and pigs and chickens and lots of dogs and cats and, and that around. Um, my Any sister horses? and I. Uh, we had, yes, we had two workhorses. Okay. Uh, two Belgians that my dad bought as colts and trained himself. And uh, they were big, beautiful horses. He never owned a tractor. He did all his farming uh, with those two horses. horses. And they were twins. They were a match. 
Aww. set of twins. They were beautiful horses. And um, anyway, then in um, 1950, we moved to Colorado Springs. My dad worked all his life then as, as a carpenter, and I spent my, my teen years then in Colorado Springs. Uh, married a man from Fort Carson, Colorado. It was close by, and we moved to Ohio. Um, things didn't work out too good there for us, so we ended up moving to Florida and uh, been living in Florida pretty much ever since. Um, Is there anything else like you remember that um, growing up, an experience um, that you had maybe with your sister or something like that that you really remember that was fun, exciting, or something like that? Uh, life on the farm was um, was great for kids. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Everything we did was pretty much centered around the church. Um, we went to every church function. Mom and Dad were very active there. Um, Dad helped remodel the church and so forth. Um, we had a creek um, that ran through our property and had a big swimming hole in it. And oh, we used to go down there. Um, but I remember one time uh, we were we were gonna go go swimming, and we didn't want to go to the big swimming hole because my sister and I really couldn't swim, so we were just gonna go upstream a little ways and wade, you know, just uh -huh. play in the water. So or so we drove a little ways up the highway and got out, and we had to walk across this hay stubble, or maybe it was corn. Anyway, a stubble, and it cut your ankles as you went through. Oh. Well, my sister had forgotten to bring her shoes. And so Dad had to carry her, and I had to walk through the stubble, and it was cutting up my Ooh. ankles, and I was very angry, and I said, you know, I should have forgotten my shoes, too. <laughs> then I would have gotten carried, too. I, I was very angry, right? And, and another incident that really sticks out in my mind was the first time I jumped out of the hayloft. Now, this was, you know, we're talking about a two-story building here, and jumping off the roof of a two-story building, wow, yeah. equivalent to it. And uh, one of the favorite things, you know, on the farm kids is play in the hayloft, and we had swings and everything up there. And uh, but jumping out of the hayloft, of course, onto a stack of hay, not just the bare ground. But I remember the first time that I got brave enough to jump out of the hayloft, and after I did it once, it was I just repeatedly did it, no problem. So you just hit the haystack and kind of slide down, so it wasn't Aww. too traumatic. But that was a long ways to jump, you know, when you're yeah. up there, it looks like a long way down. Jacob would love that probably. <laughs> yeah. um, what about some of your responsibilities on the farm? Like, did you every morning have to go get the eggs from the chicken coop, or did you have to, I don't know, wash the animals, milk the cows, anything like that? Can we, we weren't made to do a lot of the farm work. My mother was a very city-fied um, woman, and so she didn't really go out and do the farm work. Um, she did a lot of baking and like that. She would bake things to take the curb market, the farmer's market in town. Mm -hmm. And um, but my sister and I, um, our main jobs were picking beetles off the beans. Aww. Uh, we did a lot of that, or, or like hoeing around the plants, maybe hoeing the corn or the, the beans. Um, Picking strawberries. Uh, I didn't like to pick strawberries because in that area of the country we had a lot of copperheads. Ooh. And the snakes would get under the strawberry plant leaves, you know, because it was cool under there. So you always had to watch out for snakes when you were picking strawberries. But yeah. that was one of our duties. I don't think I ever saw a snake when I was picking <laughs> strawberries, but you always had to be aware that they could right. be there. Yeah. And then my sister and I would. Um, uh, set up by the road. Mother would set up a car table and some chairs, and we would set up by the highway and sell the strawberries. Oh, cool! Um, that sounds and we cool. would take turns. Okay, this car is yours, and this car is, you know, is mine, and and we'd kind of have a contest and see who would sell the most strawberries. strawberries. And they were thirty-five cents a quart. Wow! And that was one of our. All right, well, thank you very much for telling me um, about your experiences, and I appreciate your taking the time. Oh, you're welcome.